hello you all welcome back to journey with Shaw on this lovely saturday evening i come to you today because of the easter weekend of course i have to talk about my lord and savior jesus christ you all i wanted to do a special video it's not going to be a long drawn out video but it's going to be a video that i'm just asking the lord to speak through me use me as his vessel and whatever comes out of my mouth is what he put in my mouth to say and i'm gonna say it okay <laughs> all right you all um i have to tell you about how grateful my family and i are for our gift for the gift of salvation this weekend i celebrate christ every day as well as many 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 of you do as well living for him every day is a celebration when you can give your life to him every single day and you let him work through you are you perfect every day absolutely not and thank god for salvation so that we can go and repent of our sins ask the lord to forgive ask the lord to forgive us and he does so and our um, work in progress is to make sure that we try our best to sin less and be the best that we be we can be every single day and we can only do that through the help of the Holy Spirit there is no way that you're going to be able to do this on your own so as we come to you this as I come to you my family's probably gonna be in the background y'all might hear what they say in the background I just want to say how important it is for us to understand that in the year we always celebrate the biggest two biggest celebrations of the year is christmas and easter and easter christmas we know represent well christmas we know um is a representation of christ coming to earth um as a baby and uh during that time probably he was two years old but coming to earth as a baby to sacrifice himself for us okay so christmas is the celebration of receiving him coming physically in flesh to earth okay and we don't know what day he was ex um, born exactly but that's just the time of year that we celebrate okay and then easter is the greatest gift that god could have ever given us christ could have ever done for us was the gift the gift of salvation going to the cross going to the cross y'all when you read the scriptures i'm going to put down below the scriptures that tell about his the timing of um when they when he's in the garden when he's praying when they come and they arrest him um when he is um arrested to even when pontius pilate said my hands is clean is this what y'all want to do this will not be on me <laughs> but i mean even the other day as i was listening to pastors uh different pastors and this one pastor was saying how remember the scene what we the what we've read many a times we have in our mind we've seen it in movies when he came into the city and they were laying palms down some people were even laying their clothes down wasn't it um their garments and stuff people uh then they said and then later on they turned on him this pastor really brought something to my attention that i thought was beautiful those people that laid down that for christ really were christ followers they were people that absolutely loved him now maybe there were some that turned on him later but a lot of them were christians that when he came into that area they did lay down palms and their clothing to receive him him and I thought that that was beautiful you know just going through the steps of knowing what our Savior had to go through knowing what he was going to go through physically and what he was feeling and the emotions at time where he was challenged um, even when he was in the garden when he was crying to the point where they said sweat of blood um i don't know if it was actual sweat blood that came out but it was like sweats of uh, blood and even to the where he went to the father and just said you know lord if they're kind of like not trying to get out of it but it was like is there another way or whatever not trying to there's a controversial in that but whatever it was can you imagine what he was feeling but he still was obedient to his heavenly father he still said this is what you put me on this earth this is what i came to do and i'm going to complete this task i want to save mankind i want to give every man an opportunity on this earth through my death and my resurrection that they have the opportunity to be saved, to receive salvation, to ask and repent of their sins and ask the Lord to come into their heart, to receive salvation, to 
go to God no matter what you have done to be able to have that gift and ask him to forgive you and go to him and just know that you have been forgiven and that you now have the blessing and the opportunity to pray to him and talk to him and, and surrender to him to change your life. You're ready to change your life. It is a blessing. And it is something that you have to be ready for. Salvation is not something where you say, oh yeah, I believe in God and Father and Son and I'm going to heaven. It is a lifestyle. When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you have salvation, you will see it by your lifestyle, your walk, your talk, your actions, your faith. Even in your struggles and your hardships and your challenges, you tr your challenges, you are trusting your God, your Heavenly Father, to get you through. You can go to Jesus. You can talk to Him. And He can intercede for you. He is there for you with open arms. And that is the most precious gift. So this time of year is not about bunnies. It is not about eggs. Um, even though there's some representation of new life, okay, they even do some Easter um, breads that uh, represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit when they braid it and, and they make the Easter bread. I was going to do that this year, but y'all got so busy, I might do it next year, so you're just going to have to wait, but there's many videos on it. But it's a lot of representation of what the egg means and then the braided and, and different symbols of, of different things, but ultimately, we know that Easter is about the gift of salvation. What our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us on that cross. The steps you all, when you think about, when you read the word of God and you read about the steps that he had to go through, how they treated him, what they did to him, the brutal murder that he went through so that we can be saved so that we can have life eternally with our Heavenly Father, with Jesus. We will be living with Christ for eternally. There is no date, no time frame. We are with him forever. He has gone before us and he is, has, is making a place for us. That's what he said, I will go, right? Mm -hmm. And what? I'm going to prepare, prepare a place. I'm going to prepare a place. <clears throat> For you for me and that's a beautiful thing and this is why we must not take salvation for granted it's so much going on in the world today it is so much evilness like i have ever seen in my 48 years living before in my life and i cannot imagine those of you who are even older than me the times that have changed changed and just the way the people are today it is just such a big difference. And of course, when Adam and Eve bit that fruit, after that, the world went down, okay? Of course, sin entered in and it did what it was was to do. Cause man to be evil, separate themselves from God, challenge God, hate God. And there's so many people out there that just, hate God. They don't believe in God and they hate his son. They only want to talk about G God and they don't want to hear nothing about Jesus. There is no way you can ever go to the father without going through the son. He is not going to ignore what his son did for us and think that you can just over skip Christ, over skip our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and go directly to the Father. They're one. They're one. You get God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Look at those gifts. Three in one. And I have to tell you all, we have all, a lot of us, um, have gone through a lot in life. There's some people that gave their life to Christ in their youth and have lived with Him for many, many years. They've had challenges. And they've had hardships and struggles and God carries them through. You're not going to be exempt from that because that's one way that we know we will always need God. And he strengthens us by showing how he's always there for us. Can you imagine when the Israelites got to the edge of the sea and they were trying to figure out how they were going to get over to the other side? Can you imagine when he came through, when he told Moses to lift that rod, that, that staff? Can you imagine? We serve the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And he loves his son. 
And I just have to tell you all, the way the world is going today, tomorrow is not promised. Don't waste your time living a life where you have not repented of your sins, gone to Christ, to God, ask for forgiveness and ask Christ to come into your heart and mean it from the bottom of your heart and receive his Holy Spirit that lives in you. That Holy Spirit is your compass. He is the one that lets you know, don't do, this is what you do, okay. This is what you need to work on. He gives you that, when you have that that feeling where something ain't right, that's the Holy Spirit. Or you, you did something and you know you were wrong and you need to go up, that's the Holy Spirit, honey. He ministers to us when we're reading the word and don't understand and you ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand you keep reading and he will bless you to get that understanding of that passage. Even if someone comes along that knows what the passage means, it's amazing. He'll send somebody along the way. And right when you're reading that passage, you can meet that person a week or two later and they'll come in or you will hear a sermon and you will get the understanding of the passage. It's amazing living for God. I have to tell you through experience, seeing what he's done for my family, how he's blessed my family, how he's restored my family, how he has stopped generational curses because those things are real. You all, God loves us unconditionally, but he wants us to receive his son, love his son unconditionally and live for his son unconditionally. You cannot say, I love God, but I don't know about this Jesus then you don't, you're not, you don't understand God. You're not serving the right God. You're, you've created your own God in your mind. And I have to be honest. I said to myself, when I get on this channel and I talk about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I cannot be worried about whose feelings are hurt, who thinks that I'm saying things wrong, or you should say it this way, because no one can tell me how to say something this way or that way, because I live for Jesus. I live for God. And all I know is his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. I don't listen to men. A lot of men twist the word of God. You got a lot of that going on in the pulpit today. You got a lot of false teachers out there, a lot of wolves in sheep clothing. And it's confusing people. It is confusing people. But you have got to get into the word of God yourself. Ask the Lord to help you. There's Bible plans. You can look up a Bible plan on the Bible of reading the Bible. A good Bible plan, a better understanding. It's, it's the, the, the internet is great with that. Start reading the word of God and talk to God and ask him to help you understand. To help you with your life. Because you ever had so much on your plate. You just don't know what to do. You are fed up to hear. You can't think. It's just like you can't even sleep at night. You're restless. You wake up and you're just constantly, you even got lines on top of your head because you're constantly frowning because you're worried. You, this is on your mind constantly. And instead of giving it to God, you're trying to figure it out yourself. That is what he's there for. You've got to say, okay, Lord, this is what I did. This is what's happening. This is what I'm going through. I can't do this. I need your help. That's what he's there for with open arms, but not just for him to help us. Because a lot of times when we get the help from God and he's done good, we go right back to doing that bad habit again. That's what I'm reading through with the Israelites. That's what they're going through right now. Well, now I'm in Leviticus and, but the Israelites, they, 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 they'll see where God fought for them and then they'll be good for a minute and then they'll go right back to a bad old habit. OK, they want to go back to the flesh and the desires of the flesh. Then God will forgive them and then he'll do good. Then they want to go right back to the to the same thing. Then God is like, I'm about to just destroy them. Then Moses is like, no, Lord, I mean, don't do that because you don't want people thinking he made these people to come. He saved them to send them out in the desert and didn't destroy them. OK, well, these are your people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a lot that goes in. I'm just talking and rambling right now. But you all have to understand that. Serving God is a decision you have to make and you're ready for. It's not something where you say, okay, I'm ready for the Lord, but then you go to the club um, that night or you go do something uh, that you know is against God's word. If you're ready for it, you're shutting everything that will take your attention and your focus off of him and you wanting to get into getting to um, getting this flesh under control and living an obedient life. It is something you have to pursue daily, okay? Is there days that you may um, not 
um, um, uh, be able to read the Bible because something uh, came up. Of course, there's days where you have to maybe double up or, or just pick it up on another day. But the point is you don't stay away from it where you're drifting. Okay, it's so much trends that are going on. It's so many bandwagons. You ever heard of bandwagons where everybody's jumping on the bandwagon and this is the thing to do now? No, you need to focus on the word of God and stay in God's wagon and let him be the driver. Okay, let him be the pilot of your plane, his plane, and you're just a passenger. Let him be the driver. And that's the best thing I could tell you. It's a lot going on in this world today and a lot going on with the youth. And all this comes back to salvation, what Jesus did during these three days from Good Friday to today to tomorrow when he is out of the grave, okay? he's We know he's alive and well now. I'm talking about this. You guys know what I mean, okay? But all this comes back to salvation because there is a lot of people losing their souls. A lot of people are not thinking about souls. They think this is, is a fairy tale. This is not a joke. You sit up here and live a life your way and you did not give it to God and you would just say, oh, I'm Christian. I believe in the Lord and you go do your thing. It's a lot of people to claim they're Christians, baby. And they're not people you think that are going to heaven are not entering the gates of heaven because God knows the heart of man. We got to get our hearts right. That's all he wants is us. Yes, he put you on this earth. You deserve, he put you on this earth. He put, God put you, made you and put you on this earth. It is our responsibility to seek why he put us here and to do exactly what he wants us to do while we're here on this earth. Not what we want to do. What does he want us to do? It's the safest way to be. Okay. I'm reading a book right now. Um, I've been reading it slowly and I have been enjoying this book. This is a book by Ann Graham Lotz. It is Jesus Followers. Okay. Now let me start off. I'm one that the word is the number one thing that you should be reading. But we also can have motivations by other people that God have allowed to put books out um, for the purpose of encouraging us to draw closer to God and wanting to live a closer, um, have wanting to have a closer relationship with him. So this is why I'm, in, I'm showing you guys this book. I showed this on other halls. If you did, I mean, other um, videos, if you didn't see it, I'm showing you now. Now, Anne Graham Lotz is Billy Graham's daughter. Okay, and Rachel Ruth Lotz Wright is Billy Graham's granddaughter. Now, this book is called Jesus, Jesus Followers Real Life Lessons for Igniting Faith in the Next Generation. Now, this I want to show you here, and then I'm going to turn you turn it around here. Okay, you guys can see some of the Billy Graham family members there. Okay, Billy Graham was a great evangelist. Um, really good teacher. Uh, my mother grew up listening to him and I remember hearing him um, periodically from time to time. And he was a great motivated, motivational speaker, but I say more evangelist, okay? Um, and when you see how that man, um, how his family, where it's trickled down to now his grandchildren, you will understand the importance of igniting faith in the next generation what this book means when i tell you this book has been such an encouraging and just so inspiring and really helps you think about the importance of living a a, a godly life before your children and your grandchildren the youth in your family to see how this young woman came from the Grams. Her grandmother, oh my goodness, she, what was Ruth? Her grandmother Both Ruth? Her Both of her grandparents. She had two sets of wonderful grandparents. We are looking more at Ruth and Billy Graham because they were the more fame, more famous ones. But even her um, father's side father was an amazing uh, godly family. To see how God connected all of those um, equally yoked spouses to bring forth children that, yeah, they've had their challenges and everything, but ultimately, as they grew, got, got, as they got older through the years, they gave it to Jesus. They surrendered unto the Lord. And you're beginning to see it younger and younger, their generation serving Christ younger and younger. It and that it is a way of life. And that's what I said, Lord, I want a way of life. Before I have grandchildren, I want to be that grandmother that is ready. 
instill Christ in your children and in your grandchildren. It is more vital than ever as early as you possibly can. Because if you look around today, y'all, these young people are dropping like flies. And I hate saying that, but it's the truth. It is the truth. They are dropping younger and younger like flies. And some of them are making some really bad detri really bad detrimental, detrimental, um, sit put, uh, putting themselves, huh? They're making bad decisions. They're making really bad decisions and putting themselves in some bad situations. And I said, Lord, we got to pray for these generations. We got to pray for the youth. And we also, as adults, you can't be a Christian, but then your grandchildren aren't. I'm like, What's going on? What, what, what what's going on grand. you going to heaven and your grand your next generation when you gone that they, they here just living buck wild you can't do that y'all we got to give these kids jesus we got to introduce them to christ Early. so that they can learn to want to have a heart that is geared and bent toward living for jesus and that is why i love this book so much i am almost done y'all you can literally read this book in one day i know i could um but i've been so busy so i do a chapter a night with me and my mother and i also have i read it with joshua I just read it out loud to my family and seeing how um this young woman had the opportunity to have both sets of her grandparents live a godly life before her that inspired her she was even talking about how she was in high school and how she had to deal with a lot of girls not liking her because she appeared or seemed too holy and she thought she was weird she went through stages of really struggling but in the end you saw where you know it, it was best for her and so you know because that's one thing when you serve the lord when you live for jesus it's not easy but it's rewarding and it should be something that you're passionate about and become passionate more passionate about because we're not like everybody else we are different because we, we when you choose to live for him and you're living the way he lived and you're striving for that every day you're not going to look normal to people but that's okay. I'm really to, willing to take the risk every single day. It is my happiest. I've never been happier in my life than living for Jesus. Living for him, knowing that he is there for me, that he loves me, that his arms are around me, that he blesses my family and loves my family, that he encourages me every single day through his word and through others, you know, just seeing him in others and meeting other people that love the Lord just as much as you do. That is one of the greatest blessings ever. And that is what I love about this book so much. So I'm going back to, please, it is very vital. It is important that you keep the word of God. That's the number one thing. Let me get this Bible. The number one thing is you want to give them this word. Okay. That's the number one thing. The best thing you could ever give your children is the word of God. Read the word of God. She was saying how her grandfather, of course, Billy Graham traveled the world preaching the gospel and he was um, not home a lot. And his wife was just an amazing woman. Even how she handled being home with her children while her husband was gone many, 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 many months. And she was just anointed to handle that situation situation as a, 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 a kind of like a single mother in a sense um because he was gone for many months but how she even handled that was amazing she's just an amazing woman she i want to she wasn't bitter at all because she knew her husband was doing the work of the lord but i did hear him say he wished in the end that he would have been more home than out so much and balanced it um, because you know who knows there probably was some areas where it could have been a little bit more balanced but all in all to know that that man really did do the work of the Lord and spread that gospel and to know that how she loved her husband until her dying day she supported her, her husband and loved him to her dying day is just an amazing testimony of how um, uh, Miss Ruth, I'm going to call her Miss Ruth, Graham was. She was an amazing woman. But anyway, yes, the young girl was, the young granddaughter, Rachel Ruth, was talking. Don't we just love her name, Rachel Ruth, right? Can we bring names back like that? Yes. But um, she was even talking about how both of her grandparents, how her grandfather on her um, father's, on her father's side would have her read the word of God to her. And he would have her read the 17th verse. Mm -hmm. This I think it was the 17th verse out of every Book in, the, book in the word of God he wanted her to read the 17th verse okay out of every single uh book all the books 
that's in the Bible. He wanted her to read the 17th verse. I believe it was. Okay. But she said that he would be asleep. He would fall asleep with her reading to him. And then she would get up and close. Her grandmother her said, her grandmother would say, okay, get up and come on. As soon as she get up and close, he would say, uh-uh, you got to finish. <laughs> she would think he was sleeping. He was like, no, I'm not asleep. But anyway, this is the that's what that deal. That, can you imagine? She's, she's, she's the blessing of having a grandfather on your father's side having you read the word of God and your grandparents also on that side is filled with the love of Christ. And then you got this side where your grandmother is an amazing woman as well. And your grandfather is an evangelist out there spreading the gospel. She is just surrounded by so much godly influence. Mm -hmm. And people say, it don't take all that. I mean, seriously, it don't take all that. Don't wait too late to find out how much yes, it needed it to take. Because it does take all that. Yes, it it takes us constantly as adults, as parent, grandparents and parents, parents and grandparents, uncles and aunts, to live a godly life before your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, your godchildren. It is our responsibility children to teach the them, children in the community, even if they're not related to you. It is our responsibility to be that light before them so that they can see. And that light, people say the light. No, the light is Christ. There ain't no other light. It's, it's Jesus and Jesus alone. He is the light. Okay. That's what I'm speaking of. There is no greater blessing than to instill that in your children so that they can grow up and have a passion to want to know Christ, to want to seek what their purposes are, why he put him, them here and to live for him. Yes, they will have challenges. Yes, they will make mistakes. But let me tell you to know that they can run back to a Christ, a Lord, a Savior, a God with open arms to know that they, he says, I'm still here. I know I'm here to forgive you and help you walk through it. Let's do it again. Let's do it right. Or don't do that again. You see what happens when you do this. We have got to teach our children because if you don't, you all, when we grow old and we're gone, how is that generation going to be that's left here? Why would you sit up and just be comfortable with thinking, you know what? They're young. Let them live their lives. And you're not promised tomorrow to teach your children about Jesus. And then they're here. And once they get to a certain age where their minds are set, it's hard to bring them back. And another thing. But um, nothing's too hard for Jesus. Another thing. You got to pass the baton right. Yes. Pass the baton right. And that's what she's talking about. Passing that baton. It was a chapter in here about passing the baton. Pass the don't just. Oh, don't give it quick. Take them to church. Yes. And let that be it. Yes. Not, no word. Talk to them. Exactly. You got to live it. You got to have them read it. You yes. got to pray with them. You got to yes. study. It does take all of that. It takes all of that, y'all. And it, it takes, takes all, all of that. Of that. And it's, it's a daily task. And mm -hmm. it's beautiful it's not like oh so i gotta do this it becomes where you're passionate about it you mm -hmm. want to pray you want to talk to god about something it's something that's on your mind that's bothering you something that's on your mind that you're happy about something that's on your mind that you're expecting whatever it is going to god in whatever level of stage of emotion that you're in is right. the best thing you could ever do for your life right. trusting jesus in your life no matter what you're going through is the best thing you could ever do for your life giving it all to Jesus. Like I think her mother, Anne Graham Lotz, just give me Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a book that I'm going to um, um, get to. Take. Yes, mommy has a tape, just, just give me, me Jesus. Jesus. And I just tell you all, so if you are wondering how do I introduce this to my children, what do I do? Pray about it, number one, and ask the Lord to help you. Um, and, and the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom on how to mm -hmm. usher that and bring it into your children, even if they're adults. Because some mm -hmm. people say, oh, when they grown, that's it. If you didn't teach them about the, let me tell you, nothing ain't too hard for Christ. Okay. If you have, if he got Paul, <laughs> he can get your children. Mm -hmm. Okay. Trust me. All right. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing. That's the beautiful thing. There is nothing you have done. There is no amount of the pile of sin on this earth on a plate Okay, that you can say that's too much. I know that's too much for God. There's nothing God can't handle. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to give it to him and to trust him to get you through it. Okay, you are. He loves you. He loves you no matter what you're going through. He loves you. He's there for you. Talk to him.
If you're going through a divorce, talk to him. If you're going through a separation, talk to him. If you're a person that's single and feel that you have to have somebody and you're going through this person, that part, child, you need Jesus. Before anybody else, you need Christ and Christ alone. Talk to him. Get that right first so that you can understand it's not in finding a human being to give you that void, to fill that void. It's finding Christ. He's the only one that can fill that cup, mm -hmm. fill that void. Only one. Okay? If you're going through something with your children, okay? Because our children go, some people, your children go through stages where they take you through something. I was like that with my mother. She was on her knees praying for me, honey. And let me tell you, prayer works. You have to believe in the power of prayer, okay? So if you're going through something with your young children, your teen children, your adult children, pray over them. If you know they have a spirit in them that you know is against God, pray that spirit out of your children. Believe in the power. Pray for protection over your family. Yes. Speak that over your family and believe it, okay? You all, God is good. Jesus is good. He is my everything, I tell you. I love him so much. My life is so much more better. And let me tell you, there is no amount of money. Do y'all know how many people have money coming out the ears? They can go wherever they want in an instant. Meaning... If I want to go to Paris right now, let me just get my flight together and I'll just, you know, I'm leaving for Paris. Some people have it like that. But what is it to gain the world and lose your soul? Your soul is not a joke. Salvation is real. You want to make sure that when your life is over on this earth, your flesh is off, you have kissed the last breath is out of your body. You want to make sure that you are with Jesus. And how you get that is through salvation, giving your life to Christ, surrendering all unto him, going to him and repent. I don't care what you have. There is no sin on this earth that you can't go to God. Even if it's a sin where you repent and you still go to jail for it, ask for forgiveness. It don't matter. If it's a sin that you know you want to jail for, still ask for forgiveness. Okay? It don't mean you ask for forgiveness and then that sin, you committed that kind of crime and God, okay, I ask for forgiveness so everything is good. If it's something that you're going to have to go to jail for, you're going to have to do the time. But you're going to have to ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. and get your life right. And maybe you can minister in prison. Yeah. Okay? Probably. That's why I pray for prisoners yeah. that are in jail. There's a lot of prisoners that are never getting out, but they have given their life to Christ. And they are witnessing in prison mm -hmm. because even in the prison house, those people need Jesus. Okay? That's right. Even if they're there for the rest of their lives and they and rightfully so need to be. But they still need Jesus. Mm -hmm. They have a soul. That's my prayer for you to understand what this weekend means. What every day means. Amen. It's a gift from every Christ. Day. Every day. Salvation is the greatest free gift and the greatest gift ever known to man. There is no other gift that is greater than the gift of salvation. Where you, he came to save humanity so we can have life and have it e eternally with him. And the thing you don't want is to be separated from him. Separation is real. And see, that's the thing that's scary. And, and a lot of people don't. People, you ever see when people's too conservative, too, too conservative or too, they don't, they want to be too, they don't want to be too much where it's like, I don't want to, you know, because I just want to keep it where it's not kind of scaring them. You need to be, people need to be scared because that's the problem. We, we're, we're, we're frosting the cupcake and making it real. You know, uh-uh, make that thing uh, ugly. You got to tell people the truth. Listen, if you don't give your life to Christ, and you are not living for Jesus. And you just believe in God. When you pass, mm, that's not a good thing. Separated, you're separated for eternity. Okay? Eternity. You're, you're, you're not going to be with God. You can only get to through God through his son. That is mm -hmm. it. Okay? That's it. And you will see the loving gift of salvation. What Jesus did on the cross for us. And you experience it in your life every single day. The joy that he brings you in your life. Even when you're going through something. Even when you're in the middle of struggle, stress, and hardship. You will find joy in Christ and Christ alone. Amen. Just because you serve God does not mean he did not promise us. That when you become a Christian, everything is going to be great. You're going to be driving Cadillacs and traveling around the world. And, and I spoke and money came in the mail and all this stuff. No, I'm not saying those miracles didn't happen. But that's not what it's all about. Because if you don't get any of that, will you still love him? <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> he's already done enough. <laughs> if he never give you anything else, he's done enough when he went to the cross. All right, right. you all? So, like I said, if you want to know how do I 
bring this to my family how do i introduce this this is a really good book to start with like i said start with the word of god start through start through prayer asking the lord to introduce you to that to give you um solidity in in in, in a solid relationship with him and more confidence and begin to bring it to your children and your grandchildren if you know they're not saved y'all we have to be responsible we don't want to let our children just go just wow we can't do that and so this book is a really good book, you all. And it can be a, a, a nice start on helping you understand on the importance of living a godly life before your children. A lot of people are probably going to think you weird. A lot of people probably think I'm weird right now. There she go with that Jesus stuff. See, that's what I'm not going to follow her anymore. Hey, I pray for you. Keep it pushing, but I pray for you that you will come to follow Jesus. Don't follow me. Follow Jesus. So if you think I'm weird, I hey, I'll be weird all day for Jesus, honey. All day long, she will be weird for Christ, okay? So happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter. We celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is risen. He has risen. He is not in the grave no more. And he is due to come back any day. We don't know when. You need to be ready. It is not a joke. This is not some fairy tale. This is real. How I know? Because I've experienced Jesus for myself. And how you can experience him? First go to him. Pray. There is no formula to pray. Prayer. Pour out your heart. Respect him in your prayer. Honor him. Pour out your heart. Ask him, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. I repent I need your help. I need you to help me get my life right. I don't like where I'm at right now. I don't like where I'm going. I need you to save me. Give me peace. Lord, I pray that you send mentors to people that are wanting to seek Christ. I pray for those out there right now that don't know what to do. I'm asking, Lord, that you usher them and just help them to have a peace in their heart to just talk to you, to just mm -hmm. pray to you and ask you all. I ask and I pray that you help them. Holy Spirit, ask for forgiveness. Repent of your sins. Ask God to come into your heart when you are solely 100 percent ready. He will come into your heart and change your life in ways you never even thought he could. Yes, he, will. he will use you in ways you never even thought he could use you. My prayer, Father God, is that they repent, ask for your forgiveness, and choose to live for you. And walk daily. Will you fall? Yes. But you get back up. Grace you keep and mercy. Going. That's what grace and mercy is for. And we love him. We love him with all of our heart. Try Jesus. Y'all, I'm just telling you, try, I need to get a shirt. Try Jesus, right? Just try Jesus and you'll understand why I'm so happy and why I am just so at peace in my life. Do I have times where I don't have peace? Yes. Do I have times where I struggle? Yes. Do I have times where fear tries to come on? Yes. But you rebuke that stuff, child. You remember the word of God and his promises and you remember that God is in your, people say the man upstairs, don't uh-uh. God is in your presence. He is not a man upstairs. He is in your presence. He is the maker of heaven and heart, earth. He is the maker of heaven and earth and he is holding it. Okay? He is holding earth. Do you understand? He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. He knows your start and he knows your finish. So just give your life to Christ. And I'm telling you, you will absolutely fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. I love that song. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever had. Woo! In his arms, I feel protected. Thanks. Woo, okay, I can just keep going, y'all. Because <laughs> I'm just like, woo, he's so good. It's a beautiful song. All right, it is a beautiful song. I will link that song down below so y'all 
can listen to it for yourself, okay? So thank you so much for tuning in to Journey with Shar. I pray and hope that this encouraging word um, was something that can just inspire you. And thank you all for those of you who have inspired me um, from time to time in your comments. I appreciate them. That's what we're here for, to love and encourage and inspire one another and to just celebrate Jesus. That's what we're going to do, y'all. Celebrate Jesus, all right? So thank you so much for tuning in to Journey with Shar. If this is your first time ever seeing my channel and you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Every time I upload a new video, it will alert you and you all can come and check me out. See what I'm doing. Happy Resurrection Sunday. You all be blessed and I'll see you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.